Every day, someone gets hurt at a construction site. Many of these injuries could be prevented by paying attention during your orientation to job site safety. This video program is designed to help employees recognize and prevent common hazards in construction workplaces. This program is not a comprehensive training program for each topic covered, but will provide an accurate but brief overview of the various topics discussed. Having a good safety attitude means recognizing hazards before they occur and taking steps to eliminate those hazards. Having a good safety attitude begins with being aware of your surroundings and being able to recognize an unsafe situation or act if one occurs. Your attitude starts with you. Be able to stay focused on your task at all times and follow all safety rules and procedures as set out by your employer. You should always take personal responsibility to ensure the safety of yourself as well as your co-workers. Employers must have written programs in place to ensure that employees are not required to work in surroundings or under working conditions which are unsanitary, hazardous, or dangerous to their health or safety program should provide for frequent and regular inspections of the job sites, materials, and equipment by a competent person. Machinery, tools, material, or equipment which are designated to be unsafe or not in proper working order must be identified by tagging or locking the controls to render them inoperable or be physically removed from the site. You need to be aware of the many different types of equipment that is utilized at the work site. Such equipment might include forklifts, aerial lifts, bulldozers, excavators, and backhoes. Specific training on every piece of workplace equipment may not be required, but every employee should be cognizant of the characteristics and movements of the equipment. Only employees qualified by training or experience should be allowed to operate equipment and machinery. Always pay attention during training sessions. Know your company's safety procedures, rules, and policies, and follow them. An effective safety and health program requires the cooperation of both the employer and employees. If you don't understand something, talk to your supervisor. Certain activities or safety procedures at a construction site require design, inspection, or supervision by a competent person. OSHA defines a competent person as someone who is capable of identifying and authorized to take prompt corrective measures to eliminate existing and predictable hazards in the surroundings. A competent person can also identify and correct working conditions which are unsanitary, hazardous, or dangerous to employees. OSHA requires employers to provide employees with the proper PPE needed at no cost to the employee. It is important that PPE fits properly, provides the correct protection, is comfortable enough to perform the job, and is worn properly. It is important to properly select the PPE necessary to be protected from the job specific hazards. If you have any questions about PPE, talk to your supervisor. Hard hats, safety glasses, and foot protection are mandatory on most construction sites. Other personal protective equipment that may be required and is job specific is high visibility clothing, gloves, hearing protection, fall protection harnesses, arc protection suits, respirators, face shields, lineman's rubber gloves, and metatarsal guards. You must know how to use PPE correctly. Always clean and maintain your PPE.
Slips, trips, and falls are a common source of injuries in construction. Many factors contribute and cause accidents of this type. Slip and trip hazards are all around. Be on the lookout for wet surfaces, obstructed views, poor lighting, cords or cables stretched out across walkways, uneven walkways, and tools, materials, or equipment left on the working surface. Take a proactive approach to keeping your site free from slip and trip hazards. Have a personal action plan. Prevent these hazards by paying attention. Clean up tools and place them in proper storage bins or cases. Report underlit or poorly lit work areas to your supervisor. Remove debris from work areas immediately. Reroute or properly cover exposed cables or cords that cross walkways. Always wear proper footwear. Falls are the leading cause of injuries and fatalities in the construction industry. OSHA requires fall protection anytime an employee is working at six feet or more above a lower level, except when properly working on a ladder. Fall protection must be provided for all employees that are exposed to the hazard of falling into dangerous equipment, regardless of height. Some of the types of fall protection are guardrails, safety nets, covers, and personal fall arrest systems, PFAS. Your employer must determine the correct type of fall protection for the work being performed. Employees need to make sure they understand the fall protection and how to use it. If there are any questions or concerns, employees should talk to their supervisor before working in an area that requires fall protection. Protection from falling objects requires that hard hats are worn in construction areas and that barricades be erected protecting employees from falling objects. Ladders are used in many situations and having information on the proper selection, use and maintenance of ladders will help you keep safe. Always use ladders properly. Use only ladders meeting OSHA requirements and that are appropriate and meet the weight requirements for the work being performed. Fall protection is not required when working on a ladder. Use extreme caution and follow all safety rules to avoid an accident or injury. Never use a metal ladder on or around electricity. Always use a wood or fiberglass ladder. Check the warning label to ensure the ladder is appropriate for use around electrical hazards. Never use a wet ladder around electricity. Always inspect a ladder for damage before use. Ladders with structural defects must immediately be marked defective or tagged with do not use and taken out of service until repaired by a competent person or the original manufacturer or they should be destroyed and thrown away. It may be a good idea to perform a few stretching exercises prior to work each morning. Improper lifting, twisting, and bending can lead to serious back injury. Always use proper lifting techniques whenever you lift an object. Get help lifting heavy or odd-shaped objects. Never do it alone. Use special equipment such as dollies when possible to move items. Many workers are unaware of the potential electrical hazards present in their work environment. Employers must instruct and train employees in the recognition and avoidance of unsafe conditions. In general, OSHA requires that employees not work near any part of a live electrical power circuit unless protected. A variety of possible solutions may be implemented to reduce or eliminate the risk of injury associated with electrical work. Examples of solutions include the use of insulation, guarding, grounding, electrical protective devices, and safe work practices, including locking and tagging.
On construction sites, it is the employer's responsibility to provide either ground fault circuit interrupters for all 120 volt single phase 15 and 20 ampere receptacle outlets in use and not part of the permanent wiring of the building or structure, or have a scheduled and recorded assured equipment grounding conductor program covering all cords, receptacles which are not part of the permanent wiring of the building or structure, and equipment connected by cord and plug which are available for use or used by employees. Electrical equipment noted in the Assured Equipment Grounding Conductor Program must be visually inspected for damages or defects before each day's use. Any damaged or defective equipment must not be used by the employees until repaired. Many contractors require both and it is recommended to inspect all cords, plugs, and receptacles on a daily basis. Overhead power lines at work sites are extremely hazardous. Fatal electrocution is the main risk, but burns and falls from elevations are also hazards. Using tools and equipment that can contact power lines increases the risk of accidents. Watch for overhead power lines and always assume they are energized stay at least 10 feet away from power lines. Your employer will determine the type of protection best suited for the work site and your safety. Following these rules and regulations will help reduce the number of injuries and accidents from electrical hazards. Hand and power tools are very common both at work and home. The hazards associated with such tools are often overlooked or forgotten. Anyone using a tool needs to stay focused and use such tools properly. Always wear the appropriate personal protective equipment when working with tools. Power tools must be fitted with guards and safety switches. Never disable a guard or safety switch. Tools can be extremely dangerous when used improperly. To protect the user from shock and burns, electric tools must have a three-wire cord with a ground and be plugged into a grounded receptacle or be double insulated. It is recommended to always use a GFCI. Employees who work with or near chemicals need to understand the procedures necessary to protect themselves. You have a right to know about the chemicals, the dangers they present, and how to protect yourself from those dangers. Training is necessary and required by OSHA to ensure the safety of all employees. Before using any chemical, always read the label. Make sure you are adequately protected by using the appropriate personal protective equipment. If you don't understand, ask your supervisor. Safety data sheets are required for every chemical used and must be accessible at the work site at all times. The safety data sheet is a 16 section detailed informational bulletin prepared by the manufacturer or importer of a chemical. The safety data sheet provides information on the chemical, warnings, and appropriate PPE needed to work with the chemical. For consumer products such as window cleaner, toilet bowl cleaner and dishwashing liquid, when used in the same manner and with the same duration and frequency that a normal household consumer would use them at home, employees should follow the safety guidelines printed on the container. Employees should take training seriously and pay attention. Make sure you know the correct emergency procedures and use safe work habits when dealing with chemicals. Confined or enclosed space means any space having limited means of egress and is subject to the accumulation of toxic or flammable contaminants or has an oxygen deficient atmosphere. Examples of confined spaces are storage tanks, bins, sewers, tunnels, and excavations. Many confined spaces are covered by OSHA as a permitted confined space. The permit is issued after rigorous testing of the confined space per OSHA guidelines. 
Employees that are required to enter into confined or enclosed spaces must be instructed and trained about the nature of the hazards involved, the necessary precautions to be taken, and in the use of protective and emergency equipment required. Never enter into a confined or enclosed space unless properly trained and instructed by your employer. Scaffolds are useful. However, working with tools and building materials on the limited space of a scaffold is difficult. Without fall protection or safe access, a scaffold is hazardous. Falls from improperly constructed scaffolds can result in injuries ranging from sprains to death. Always place scaffolds on level ground. A scaffold should be inspected by a competent person on a daily basis. Construct all scaffolds according to the manufacturer's instructions. Install guardrail systems along all open sides and endings of platforms. Use appropriate fall protection for scaffolds more than 10 feet above a lower floor. Provide safe access to all scaffold platforms. Do not climb cross bracing as a means of access. Masonry scaffolds have different rules that allow an open side for bricklaying work. Cave-ins are perhaps the most feared excavation or trenching hazard. But other potentially fatal hazards exist, including asphyxiation due to lack of oxygen in a confined space, inhalation of toxic fumes, drowning, etc. Electrocution or explosions can occur when workers contact underground utilities. Always mark underground lines before digging. Trenches and excavations must be inspected daily by a competent person for evidence of possible cave-ins, hazardous atmospheres, failure of protective systems, or other unsafe conditions. Trenching and excavation work, due to its highly technical nature, as well as its inherent hazards, requires a greater level of training and experience than a normal worker would possess. Before undertaking trenching or excavating, make sure a competent person is present to ensure everyone's safety. Trenches deeper than four feet require proper shoring or a trench box and a proper means of exit and egress for workers. Fire hazards are all around construction sites. Employers must have a fire protection plan that is followed for the duration of the construction or demolition work. This plan must be part of your orientation. Know the location of fire extinguishers. Smoking is prohibited at many construction sites or is permitted in designated areas only. Prevention is the best defense against fire hazards. At times, you may become a fire watch to an open cutting or welder. If you are a fire watch, OSHA requires you stay in the area as a fire watch for a minimum of 30 minutes after the cutting or welding has been completed. First aid is limited care for an illness or injury until trained medical attention can arrive. The employer has designated first aid personnel that work on the site. Be prepared at all times and know the locations of all first aid kits. Know the location of the nearest eye wash and emergency shower. Know who is certified in first aid training at the work site. And finally, know who to call in case of an emergency. Report every accident or close call to your supervisor. Construction sites can be dangerous. Be aware and stay aware. This program has been a brief introduction to a variety of workplace subjects. Your employer should provide in-depth safety training on these and other significant hazards in your workplace.